everybody, welcome back to my channel. It is October, and you know what that means. It's time for another Halloween custom. So this year is the fifth anniversary of me doing a Halloween custom doll. In the past, I've done Sally the Ragdoll from The Nightmare Before Christmas, Circus Baby from Five Nights at Freddy's Sister Location, Maleficent, and Madame Leota from The Haunted Mansion at Disneyland. This year, I wanted to do something a little bit different. Instead of doing an existing character, I wanted to make my own custom character. Now, coming up with an original character is not as easy as you might think. I liked the idea of doing kind of like a modern witch. I've also been wanting to make another mermaid doll ever since last year when I participated in Dollightful's Tropical Custom Doll collaboration video that she did. That gave me the idea to do like a Halloween witch mermaid. So I actually came up with this design. This is the first time that I've actually like drawn out a concept, but the minute I started on this, all of a sudden I just had so much inspiration and so many ideas coming out. Now I'm not going to be adhering to this design very strictly just because I'm going to be working with whatever materials that I have but one of my favorite things about this doll is the hat and then I want to try and see if I can sew the top no promises I might go with the top that I already have in fact I'm going to look through my existing doll clothes and see if I have any pieces that I can actually use obviously if I can you know save on work then it's just going to save time and make things easier <laughs> When I decided to do a Halloween mermaid, one thing that I knew that I wanted to do was I wanted to make the fins out of like autumn leaves because, you know, they're orange and everything. Her tail's gonna be black. And I did do a couple concepts for like what her face might end up looking like. So I'm not 100% sure yet if I'm gonna give her a broom, but this is just the starting point for me. Also, don't mind my hands. I just had my hair purple and the dye stains. So yeah. <laughs> So let's go ahead and get started on the actual custom. I decided to use this Melody Piper doll just because I really, really like using Ever After High as a base doll. I just love the face sculpts, their proportions, and the articulation, of course, is amazing. And when I pictured the finished doll in my head, Melody's face mold and her skin tone is going to be perfect for what I'm looking for. Let's go ahead and get Melody prepped so that way we can get started on customizing. I start off by removing the doll's clothing. Next, I remove the doll's factory hair. I start by cutting it as close to the scalp as I possibly can. Then I remove the doll's head by heating it up first. You can do this with a hair dryer, or in this case I'm using really hot water. Basically what this does is it makes the head really squishy, and it's less likely that you'll damage the neck peg when you pull the head off. After that, I can remove the remaining glue and hair plugs by scraping the inside of the head with a flathead screwdriver and then pulling everything out through the neck hole using a pair of tweezers. Ew. It's like a caterpillar. <laughs> I started to realize that the purple from my hands is starting to transfer to the doll's skin. Uh. So I decided to wear some gloves for now, <laughs> just to protect the rest of the artwork. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take some pure acetone on a cotton pad, and I'm going to remove her factory paint. Any ideas? Next, I wash off the head with warm soapy water, and then dry her really good. And now we have our blank canvas. For the reroute, I'm going to be using some nylon hair that I got from dollyhair.com. The colors I'm going to use are marshmallow, black magic, sour apple martini, tangerine, and sour grapes. Now's when I'm realizing that I didn't actually need to remove the paint from the scalp because it would have been the perfect color, but that's okay. Let's just replace it with some acrylics. I usually start off a reroute by going around the perimeter of the hairline. After that, I'll add the part and then fill out the rest of the hair. And now I've got something like this. To secure the hair, I'm going to use this Fabric Fusion Fabric Glue. Squeezing some of the glue into the head through the neck hole, I use the nozzle to thoroughly coat every hair plug as best I can. 
After that, I like to squish the head to move the glue around inside, just to make sure everything is evenly coated. You can also do this with a Q-tip or a cotton bud if you like. Something else I wanted to point out is you can kind of see how it's shiny right around the neck hole. That's the glue that I accidentally got on the outside. That is going to dry and get sticky, so I want to take that off. So I actually happen to have some isopropyl alcohol. Um, I use this for doing my nails, but you can use any kind of rubbing alcohol. I'm just going to put it on a little cotton bud, and then I'm just going to wipe away the residue. There we go. Much better. Now I'm going to let the glue dry for at least 24 hours. Since this is the only hole where air can get in, there's not a lot of airflow, so it takes a while. The longer I let it sit, the better. The next thing I'm going to work on is the mermaid tail. I had a hard time deciding if I wanted to do a permanent tail the way I did with Kalia last year, or if I wanted to try my hand in sewing and give this doll a mermaid tail that can be removed. Ultimately, I decided to keep the doll's legs and try to sew a removable tail for her. I made a couple of different tails using different methods, but my favorite one was the one that I ended up hand sewing, so I'll show you how I did that. Just to get a rough measurement, I folded the fabric over and laid the doll on top of it, and then I used that to cut out a rectangle. I taped the doll's legs so they wouldn't move around. I wrapped the fabric around the doll with the good side facing in, and then I pinned the fabric along the back for a snug fit. After that, I pulled the fabric off the doll, I hand stitched the line where the pins were, and then I cut off the excess fabric. I tried the tail back on the doll to make sure everything fits and see if I need to make any adjustments, which in this case I didn't. So I folded down the fabric at the top where I want the waistband to be, pulled the tail back off the doll, and then stitched the back of the waistband closed. Now I didn't show this part on camera, but I did also gather the front of the waistband, just so that way it kind of comes down and creates that more of like a mermaid tail look. Now to add the fin. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut off the sides and bring the end of this to a point. So now there is a front side and a back side. All right, I'm just gonna set this aside for a second. Let's talk about the fins. So I got this garland from Joann's. I picked out a whole bunch of different leaves that I really like. I'm just going to take and remove this little plastic piece on the back really carefully. And I'm gonna do that to all of these leaves. Now I've got my pile of leaves here and a whole bunch of glitter um, all over my desk. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut these down the middle so that way I have something that looks like this and I'm going to start layering them up until I find a combination that I like. Alright, so this is the combination that I came up with. I ended up trimming up these leaves just so that way I get a variety of different sizes so you can see each layer. For this next part, you can sew these on if you want, but I'm just going to use hot glue. Uh, it's just a lot easier and a little bit faster. I am just adding a little dab of hot glue right here at the base of the leaves just to kind of hold them all together. That way I can take out the pin and everything is still basically being held together for me. Okay, so I'm just going to trim one of these down to help me glue these together and uh, it'll just kind of help stability. I'm just going to quickly go in between each leaf and just add a little dot of hot glue just to make sure that these all stay together. Okay, so now I have something that looks like this. I'm really happy with how this turned out. And I'm going to glue this right to the bottom of the tail right here. To cover up the seams and create a smoother transition from the black to the leaves, I'm going to cover the area with Mod Podge and then sprinkle some black glitter on it.
Okay, so the glue is drying on the tail. Right now I'm gonna take this stretchy matte fabric and I'm gonna make a, a quick little top for the doll. Oh, that's actually kind of cute. So I was just gonna use this flat part of the fabric originally, but I cut this part off, which is just on the edge, and I kind of like the texture on it, so I think I'm actually gonna use this for the top. And I'm basically gonna do the same thing that I did for the tail. I'm just gonna pinch it here. I'm actually going to pull this off over her legs, and now I'm gonna pin it, because it'll just be a little easier when it's not on the doll. And then super simple, I'm just gonna stitch this closed right here. Now that I have this sewn, I'm just gonna cut off the excess real quick. So I'm gonna flip this inside out and try it on the doll. All right, there we go. The next thing I wanted to do was I wanted to find a way to incorporate this ribbon somehow. I got it at Joann's and I really, really like it. I was thinking of doing something similar to what Esmeralda has with this little like side skirt thing. So let me see if I can make something work. I wrap the ribbon around the doll's waist so I can see how much of it I need to use. And then I just take some scissors to trim it to the length that I need. I'm also not a huge fan of all these sequins up here. So I think I'm just gonna cut it off right down because really all I want are these bigger sequins hanging down. Now that this is stitched to the mesh, I'm just gonna cut off all of the excess that I don't need. Now we have something that looks like this. And here we go. Okay, so I want to make a witch hat for this doll. So I made a little mock-up or like a little practice run, and this is what I want the hat to look like. I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. To make this hat, this is the pattern that I used. Um, I made this while following a tutorial, so I'm not gonna go in too much depth about like how to do all of this, but if you wanna check out the video tutorial that I followed, I'll leave a link to that down below. Next, I'm gonna finish up the hat with some extra details. If you look here at my original sketch, I had like some strings with little gems or embellishments hanging down from the hat. So I wanna try and remake those. To do that, I'm just gonna use some black thread and then I've got like little gems and stuff for nail art. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna glue some of these to the thread. To attach all of the little embellishments, I'm gonna be using some Mod Podge. All right, now it's time to embellish the hat. I'm gonna add some of this orange embroidery thread around the brim right here.
face up. I'm first going to wrap up the doll's hair in a piece of scrap fabric, and then I'm going to give her two layers of Mr. Super Clear just to prep and prime the face. I'm going to keep the face up relatively simple. I start by sketching out all of the facial features, and to do this I'm using Derwent watercolor pencils as well as General's chalk pack style pencils. For the eyebrows, I start by blocking them in using chalk pastels, then I use a kneaded eraser to shape them the way I want. After that, I go over them with a colored pencil to do the individual hair strokes. Regardless of whether the doll is looking forward or off to the side, the eyes can always be a bit tricky. I tend to go back and forth between pencils and an eraser until I'm happy with the shape. I started coloring in the eyes with colored pencils, but this ended up being redundant because later I decided to go over it with acrylic paint. Next I fill in the scleras of the eyes using a General's chalk pastel pencil in white. I have to give a huge shout out to Blank Space Dolls for letting me know about these pencils. They go on so easily and the color is so opaque, they work much better than watercolor pencils. For the lips, I basically did the same thing that I did for the eyebrows. I started off using chalk pastels, and then I used a kneaded eraser to shape the lips the way that I wanted them to be. Next, I'm going to work on the rest of the doll's makeup around the eyes and cheeks using chalk pastels. And just as an extra little detail, I'm going to go ahead and give the doll some freckles using a light brown pencil. Alright, so this is where we're at with the first layer. I'm actually really happy where we're at, so I'm going to go and spray two more layers of Mr. Super Clear just to seal everything in, and I'll be right back. All right, and here's what she looks like after two layers of Mr. Super Clear. Now I'm just gonna go back in, touch up a little bit with the pastels, and sharpen all of the colors with the colored pencils. I just put another layer of Mr. Super Clear on and I cleaned up some of the details with the colored pencil. Now I'm just going to go in and fix the eyebrows up a little bit and then I'm going to start working on the eyes with the acrylic paint. When the chalk pastels and the colored pencils aren't building up the color as opaque as I'd like, that's when I switch over to the acrylic paint.
All right, I'm liking where I'm at, so I'm gonna add another layer of Mr. Super Clear, and then I'll come back to finish up a few details. After the final layer of Mr. Super Clear, I didn't really do too much else. I just added some catch lights in the eyes using acrylic paint, and now the face up is done. With her head attached, I can now free her from the hair burrito. She's looking pretty good, but I do want her hair to lay a little flatter, and I do want to set the part, so I'm just going to give her a boil water rinse really quick, and I'll be right back. Being very careful, I pour the boiling water over the doll's hair. Here it looked like she was about to fall, so I put down a heavy plate on her stand to help stabilize her. This may look weird, but just so that way the hair doesn't dry too flat, I shake the doll out and that will give it a little bit of volume once it does dry. Just make sure that the part is set where you want it. Just make sure that the hair is sitting the way you like it before it dries completely. I just like to make sure that the part is still thatched the way I want it so that none of these colors are like over in the wrong spot or something like that. Once the hair is fully dry, I'm going to go ahead and style it. Here I'm separating the three colored strands and I'm just going to braid them together. Clipping the braid out of the way, it's time to give her a haircut. I decided to give her a blunt cut, but I'm going to keep it long. She is a mermaid after all. And I'm just going to trim the end of this so that way it has kind of a blunt cut too. To finish the hairstyle, I'm just going to pull the side of her hair into a small ponytail. The doll is almost finished. I'm just going to add a couple of last minute details, like a choker necklace, a mini manicure, and a tattoo on her upper arm. Alright, let's go ahead and get everything assembled, and then we'll take a look at the final product. So just like with Kalia, I wanted to give this doll a name of her own since she is an original character, and um, I pulled a lot of inspiration from places that I normally look, like Greek mythology, um, old Celtic names, and stuff like that. Um, eventually I, I knew that I wanted her to have something that sounded like nature or like trees or flowers because she is kind of like a nature spirit in a way, um, and I decided on the name Aspen. I just thought that it was really pretty, and I think that she looks like an Aspen. I think it's pretty fitting for her. This doll was so much fun to make. Of course, she did come with her challenges. I mean, that's what happens anytime you're crafting, right? Especially when you're doing things for the first time. A lot of things are trial and error, like the tail in this instance. But I'm so glad that I stuck with it because I think the tail is literally my favorite thing about this doll. I'm so happy with just the look of it and everything, and I'm so glad that it turned out the way I expected. Now, if you remember back to the sketch that I showed at the beginning, I did show her with a little witch broom, and I wanted to make that happen, so I decided to do a little bonus clip here at the end with uh, her human legs, and she has her broom there for you. I just want to say a huge thank you for watching this video, but also for everybody who subscribed to me. Um, at the time of the recording this, I am almost at a thousand subscribers. I think I only need like 40 more subscribers to go, and that's just mind-blowing to me that that many people want to follow along with my journey. So I just, I really appreciate it. I've gotten so much good feedback and so much support, and it really means a lot. 
That being said, if you've made it this far in the video and you haven't gotten tired of my voice already, why not stick around? Go ahead and subscribe, ring the bell to get notifications every time I upload, and if you want to check me out on other social media, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok, and I'm at Chub Marvelous on all of those. So anyway, thanks again so much for watching. I hope to see you guys next time. Bye!